Two weeks ago I uploaded my first video and it got me a lot of subscribers. But there is one problem. I don't know how to make games. I downloaded Unity for the first time in my life two months ago, so I thought what can I do to quickly learn how to make cool games, because what will my video be about if I don't know how to make games? And here's my idea. Make a 3D survival game that has a lot of different game mechanics. And I'll create a cool devlog. Ok, let's get started. In order not to delay the development for half a year, I set a limit of 21 days. Therefore, we need to hurry. The first thing I need is movement. Movement is done. That's all I can do myself. Now we need tutorials on YouTube. By the way, what will my game be about? Well, good question. My game will be a survival FPS, later maybe I'll add multiplayer if you really like it. In this case I will have to add my game to Steam. Ok, this is something like raft. Post yourself on a raft, collect the sources, expand the raft. Your main task now is to survive. A few minutes later you sail up to the island. It uses a procedural generation to appear, so every game will be different. Here you can get even more sources, because soon you will have to fight enemies on the island. What happens next you'll find out later. Now let's create game mechanics so you can survive. The first and most important thing is the inventory. To create this I use several YouTube tutorials at the same time, combined it all into one code and surprisingly it works. Ignore this terrible interface or rather everything that I will do today, because later I will definitely redraw it. An important part of the inventory system is the ability to drag and drop items. I was able to implement this and I really like it when items fly. Therefore, be prepared for the fact that if you drop items out of your inventory, then there is a chance that you will lose some of them. Now it's time to add quick slots like in Minecraft. I drew the texture of the slot, as well as the texture of the selected slot. And now I have to make models for my game. This is something that I can handle without any problems, because a long time ago I made cartoons on YouTube, but it's better for you not to know that story. The first tool in my game will be a stone axe. I modeled this and I'm completely satisfied with the result. Next I made a display of items in hand, as well as the ability to stack items. Wait, how did I get zero sources? The second day started with the addition of an axe hit animation. After a few hours I finally figured out how to do it. If there is an axe then there must be trees. In Blender I made several versions of palm trees. Next I will generate the island randomly and when placing the trees I will use a random of these models. And yes, now you can mine wood. To make it look better I added particles from some random asset. Cool. I just got the ability to customize how many health units each individual tree will have. But ok, next I decided to add stone to my game. I made a thing that changed the shapes of a cube into something that looks like stone. To mine stone I added a stone pickaxe. Also you can't mine stone with an axe or wood with a pickaxe. Boom! Then for some reason I decided to add these indicators. In fact I won't be using them much in this video so ignore them. Wait, what is this? It's a coconut! With a 10% chance you can get a coconut in your inventory when you hit the tree, after which you can eat it. So what's next on the plan? Every survival game has a crafting system. In my game I decided to completely abandon the workbench and make it possible to craft anything anywhere if you have a blueprint. I had to write a several script that will manage all the interfaces in the game. If you already have the inventory interface open, you won't be able to open the crafting interface on top of it. By the way, this is what a blueprint looks like. I had to do game design. I cannot any ore, but I need to decide if you can my diamonds with a stone pickaxe and in general how different aspects of the game will intersect. I don't know, iron pickaxe which is twice as strong as a stone pickaxe, also in one hit you get twice as many resources. In order for you to get iron and craft an iron pickaxe, I had to add a furnace. By the way, this is the first thing I did without tutorials. I already understood how to make such things and I was able to create a furnace myself. And yes, this is the furnace model. That's what I definitely couldn't do myself, this is a building system. First I only wanted to make the building system only for furnace, but which guy to find is what you will do. So I added a foundation, walls, a roof and a door. It was one of the most difficult parts, I spent a whole day implementing this system. It was quite simple, for example this is what the foundation looks like. So that you can attach a foundation to another foundation, there are connections here. 
These objects are the ideal distance, so that the foundation fit together exactly. The colliders are a little to the side, and if you aim at these colliders, then the object moves to the center of the object with the collider that is here. The rest of the connections work the same. To keep it from being boring, I added a hard method you can use to build. And boom, now you can build a furnace. The most important thing is that each furnace stores its own data, so you can smelt iron in one furnace and at the same time gold in another. According to a similar system, I added chests. They store data by themselves individually, therefore two chests will never get confused. And here's the door that you can place in the doorway. Now you can even build a house. Oh wait, what is this? Am I finally starting to make a design? I took out the realization of the ocean, the most difficult was to create a shader that will make waves. After some time I completed this task. Next I worked on a script that will push items to the surface of the water. There were some problems with post-processing, but now there is a nice filter underwater that tells you you're underwater. After items I decided to teach the player how to swim as well. It took me a very long time to get this to work, but in the end I implemented this using joints. The possibility of drowning is not yet planned. Well, let's add a bottle to my game. I did it for a reason because now I'm going to add a garden bed where you can grow potatoes. By the way, I wrote the script myself and I'm very pleased with the result. I can add any new item, give it time to grow and do it very easily. For the possibility of crafting a bottle, I added plastic. Next I made a campfire and it turned out very cool. For several hours I wrote code to make it work. And now you can put potatoes in here, after which it will become cooked. This will restore you a lot more hunger points than a raw potato. So time to sum up. Now I'm going to show you everything that I did in the first 7 days of development. First I will take stone tools and get some resources. Now I can craft a garden bed and place it anywhere on the map. I also need a bottle, fill it with water and water the garden bed. While it's growing I'll build a furnace and put iron in it. The potatoes have grown, which means I can put them to cook. Next I found blueprints of improved tools and made an iron axe. By the way, let's plant potatoes. Also in Magia there is the possibility of building. You can build floors and walls. To make it easier for me, I will put a chest here and put some resources in it. Here I will build the door as well as the ceiling. If I had more resources, I would build a bigger house. There is also a notion and a swimming system. That's all I managed to do in the first 7 days of making my first game in Unity. In the next part I'll continue to create a single player part of the game, we'll add an island with procedural generation, AI and much more. And if there are 1000 likes on this video then I'll add a tank to my game.